Hello everybody, my name's Oscar and today I'm going to explain to you how to get a permit to fly your drone in Tunisia in 2021. Now, if you liked my video last week, which was about how to get a carte de séjour here in Tunisia, which is a residency permit, then you are going to love this video. Uh, it's another deep dive into the very confusing bureaucracy around getting yourself a permit to fly a drone. Now, let me start by saying it is not illegal to fly a drone here in Tunisia, despite what it says on the internet. Uh, you just need a permit and getting hold of a permit in order to fly your drone is an extremely difficult and complicated process. So I've seen a lot of questions about this on Facebook groups, uh, on Reddit, uh, elsewhere online. If we have a look, let me show you some of the examples. People are all asking the same questions, having a lot of issues. So I thought I'd address that for everybody today and hopefully find this video useful. Now let's start by outlining the problem that people face uh, when they want to use their drone here in Tunisia. Now the main issue is that Tunisia's laws relating to the use of drones are over 25 years old. Now let's have a look at them now. So they're based on a ministerial law from the 6th of April in 1995, uh, and here it is. And this basically prohibits, uh, this one's in French, but let's just have a look at some of the interesting parts. Uh, this prohibits all persons from photographing or filming from an aircraft, ultralight airplane, hot air balloon, or any other means of air travel over Tunisian territory without having previously obtained authorization. Now, this code does actually outline uh, the information that you need to provide to the authorities in order to get a permit, and also even tells you which ministries you need to contact. However, as we say, it's pretty out of date, and the requirements have actually changed since then. So today we're going to go through the 2021 requirements, uh, and this is based on a lot of trips I've made to various ministries over the past few months. So hopefully they'll still be up to date when you watch this video. Now the overall process for getting a permit is handled by the Ministère de l'Equipement, de l'Habitat et de l'Infrastructure, which is basically Tunisia's infrastructure ministry. Uh, so prepare yourself for lots of trips to this place, which is in Tunis, uh, over the course of this application process. If we have a look here on Google Maps, you can see exactly where it is. However, before we head down to that ministry, there are some other processes we need to go through. So uh, let's go through it in order. So step one is you actually need to get a permit to import the drone into Tunisia. So you've got to start doing something before you even come into Tunisia with your drone. So if you just fly into Tunisia with a drone in your hand baggage or in your check baggage, you are liable to have it confiscated by customs at the airport. And if we look online again, you can see all sorts of horror stories, people arriving in Gerber, people arriving in Tunis, having their drones taken away from them. So we're only on step one and already the process gets a bit complicated and confusing. No one seems to really know who's in charge of giving you permission to bring the drone into Tunisia in the first place. If we have a look at this website, you can see that they explicitly say that it needs to be the Ministry of Defence that gives you a permit to bring in the drone. Welcome to my first continuity error. So I've actually spoken to the Ministry of Defence and the Customs Agency today and they've both clarified that actually it is the Ministry of Interior that needs to give you the permit to import the drone into Tunisia in the first place. Now, unfortunately, the Ministry of Interior have also clarified they're currently not giving any permits out to import drones into Tunisia uh, unless you are doing it on behalf of another ministry. So, for example, if you're working on an agriculture project with the Ministry of Agriculture, you need to bring a drone in, uh, or if you're working with the Ministry of Health, or something along those lines. Now, I don't know whether that is a policy specifically because of COVID, because they are short staffed at the moment due to working regulations, or whether that's just a policy moving forwards and you're gonna always have to have a relationship with one of the other ministries. But as it stands, uh, it's not gonna be possible for you to bring a drone into Tunisia for personal use. You're gonna have to have some sort of letter or some other ministry vouching for you to bring it in. There is another step that you can complete before you even arrive in Tunisia with your drone. So what you need to do is get in touch with the Agence Nationale des Fréquences, who I guess are the organization that manage the telecommunications frequencies in Tunisia. Uh, and you need to get a letter from them, uh, un avis, A-V-I-S, uh, saying that they think your drone is going to be okay for use in Tunisia. So basically they're just checking that the frequency uh, that your drone uses for communicating with the remote controller isn't going to interfere with any kind of um, frequencies used by the military or security services. Now, it's perfectly possible to sneak a drone past customs at the airport, uh, although I really wouldn't recommend this. So when you arrive, regardless of whether customs 
pull you up on having a drone, you need to bring it to their attention because you actually need to get it kind of stamped into the country and get a certificate from the customs authority saying that you have imported it legally. So yeah, don't, don't just randomly bring one in and cross your fingers and hope that they don't find it because that's gonna cause problems in the second step of this process. So once you've landed and you have drawn customs attention to your drone in Tunisia, uh, they are gonna take it away from you. And there's actually no way of avoiding this, even if you do the process properly. So the drone is actually going to stay with customs for the time being. And you hand it over to them in return. What you're looking for is an avis d'arrivée that confirms it has been uh, noted by customs. And you're gonna need that certificate uh, to take and show cert. Step number two, we now need to get a drone technical inspection. So we've imported the drone legally. Now, before we actually apply for a permit to fly it, we need to get it checked by the authorities to make sure it's suitable to be permitted. So I guess to make sure it's safe, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is done by CERT here in Tunis. That is the Centre des Etudes et de Recherche de Telecommunication. Uh, and if we have a look on their website, so at cert.tn, we can see this is where they are in Tunis. You are going to take your avis d'arrivée and you are going to take it along to CERT to show that you have a drone that's stuck with customs that you would like to take out of customs and bring to them in order to be inspected to make sure it conforms to the standards they check for. Now, the certificate that you are trying to get from CERT is called a retrait pour conformité, which is basically a withdrawal to check conformity. Getting your retrait pour conformité from CERT takes about two days and the price really depends on the complexity of your drone. So it can be anything from about 300 up to around 800 dinars because you're kind of paying for the time of the specialists in there to be checking conformity. So you're gonna pay them the money, they are gonna give you uh, the retrait pour conformité and then you are gonna take that back to customs and you're gonna hand that over and customs will give you the drone. Here on the screen, we have a list of all the documentation that CERT are gonna require in order to give you a retrait pour conformité. And as we can see, uh, they're gonna need the avis de l'ANF, which is the Agence Nationale des Fréquences, so you need to have already organized that in advance. Um, and they are also gonna need the avis d'arrivée, which is the certificate from customs, the one that they gave you when they took the drone from you when you first arrived. And there's a whole list of other things in there, documentation to do with you and to do with your drone. The attestation de conformité is going to take one or two weeks, possibly more. Again, it depends on how busy certs are, depends on how complicated your drone is. Uh, but you're not going to have to pay anything extra for that because you've already handed over your cash to get your RCO, so your retrait pour conformité. And eventually, uh, certs are going to give you that attestation de conformité, uh, which is what you are going to actually put into your application file when you go and apply at the Ministry of Infrastructure. Right, step number three, actually applying for the permit. Now, this is the big one, and this is where it gets complicated again, because we need a lot of documentation for them to give us permission to fly our drone. So the overall application is handled by the uh, Ministry of Infrastructure, as I said. So that's the Ministère de l'Equipement, de l'Habitat et de l'Infrastructure. And let's have a look and see where they are here on Google Maps. So there they are in Tunis. Um, their website actually has a list of the documentation that is required for this process. So let's have a look there. They've actually outlined it for you. Um, and rather helpfully, you're going to hand over four sets. Oh. Sorry, this is my cat. She feels very strongly about drone permitting in Tunisia. So I guess she's just going to be in the rest of this video. Can you get off the table, please? Where was I? Oh yeah, so these guys are in charge of handling the process and they are also in charge with sharing your application with the other ministries that need to give it their stamp of approval. So in particular, this is the Ministry of Defense, uh, this is the Ministry of the Interior, uh, and it's, it's also the Ministry of Technology and Communication and Transport. So you're gonna hand over four copies of everything to them. They are then gonna share that with the other ministries and eventually they're gonna come back to you with a permit and you are able to fly. So let's have a look at what documentation you need to hand over to them in order to get a permit. Now, if we take a quick look at the conditions for obtaining a permit, you can see that there's no distinction in the regulations between a commercial permit or a personal permit. So it says that they'll give you a permit as long as you give them the right documentation for any kind of aerial photography that in a commercial, industrial, scientific, uh, marketing or personal uh, capacity. So I guess regardless of whether you intend to use your drone to take some personal footage of the Star Wars sites down south or whether you're looking to, to run some sort of agricultural project where you use the drones for 
aerial surveillance uh, and mapping. The first thing they require is a letter explaining exactly what it is you intend to do. I don't think there's a fixed format for this. You just need to kind of write to them and say, firstly, whether you're applying in a personal capacity or on behalf of your company, uh, and then just explain what's going on. So are you gonna be using the footage for marketing? Are you just doing it out of personal interest? Stick it all down. It needs to be in French or Arabic, and then make sure you sign at the bottom. That is our first item we need to hand over. And again, we need four copies of everything for this. Now, if you are applying on behalf of your company, so your Tunisian company, then you are actually gonna to need to provide some documentation uh, regarding your company. And in particular, you're gonna to need to provide your extra, extra du registre national des entreprises. So this has got a QR code so they can actually check it. Um, and I did a whole video about this last week, talking about how you can register a company in Tunisia. But basically, uh, if you're gonna apply for a drone permit through your company in Tunisia, then that's what you need to show them. The second thing you need to fill out is the actual application form and the PDF for that is actually lin linked on the ministry's website. So let's have a look at it here. Oh look, it's in Arabic. So you're going to need to get someone to help you with this if you don't speak Arabic. Uh, but basically there is a French language version of this floating out there. Let me show it to you. And yeah, what it's asking for basically is uh, your name, uh, the name of your company, if, if that's what you're doing, uh, what exactly why you're doing it, when you're doing the photography, uh, the regions you intend to photograph, the type of film you're going to be taking, uh, the equipment that you're going to be using to take that film, uh, your type of drone, the actual serial number of the drone, uh, and then your actual personal details, so your passport number. Uh, your nationality, uh, your name and date of birth. So that just kind of sits on top of the application and gives them a rough idea with the letter of what you're doing and then they can dig into that application pile to get more details on each of these. Now the third item they require is information about the drone itself. So it says copies of the drone's documentation. I wasn't entirely clear what that meant, so all I did is I went onto the DJI website and I downloaded, I went to the French DJI website, so I downloaded the French language version of all the technical specifications for the drone that I had, which is, seemed to be acceptable. So I've, I've actually shown that to them. I guess the most important things to highlight here are the weight of the drone, um, the type of batteries you're using, uh, how it communicates with the remote controller, that kind of thing. But you can get all of that off the website, so you can just really copy and paste that into a document and print that out. Fourth thing we need is a copy of your identity card or passport. So yeah, just make a colour copy, hand that one over, very simple. The next thing we need to outline is the actual uh, time period and the location of your filming mission. Now I was given an actual form at the ministry that shows the kind of format they'd like this stuff presented in. So if we have a look here on this form, modeled by my beautiful assistant, uh, they want the date of the flying, they want the start time and the end time of the intended flying, they want the zone that you are going to photograph, and this is quite important uh, in terms of GPS formats. They want it in degrees, minutes and seconds. So make sure you provide that exactly where you're going to be filming. Maximum altitude and then the radius from that location. Now, attached to this, for every single zone that you for every single zone that you show them, you're actually going to want a, a kind of shaded Google satellite view image to show exactly where you intend to fly. Um, so yeah, it's not just going to be one of these forms, you're going to have a multiple set of other pictures to show them the exact square, circle, whatever it is that you intend to fly in. Next thing they're going to want is the technical specifications of the actual photography equipment, whether that is a camera or a video camera. Again, you can just lift this wholesale from the website of the drone manufacturer, just make sure it's in French or Arabic so that you can print that out and hand it over. Now the next thing uh, applies to using the drone for mapping, which isn't really relevant to us because I assume you're not going to be using it for mapping. Uh, however, remember we do need to include that certificate from CERT, C-E-R-T, to show that the drone has passed a technical inspection upon being imported, so it is safe for them to uh, give you a permit to fly. So make sure we throw that into the mix as well. And lastly, they want a plan delimiting the zone that you're actually gonna fly in and take the photos or the video, but we've already done that because we've included that in the uh, period and the program of the mission earlier on. Another document that you are gonna need to hand over is your license to fly a drone. <laughs> so, that really depends on where you come from and what the licensing infrastructure is like uh, back home. So for the UK, it's actually pretty straightforward to get a drone license. You click through to this website, uh, you do have to do a test, 
Uh, but once you've done the test, you can actually generate yourself an online certificate. And let me show you mine. There we go, there is my drone and model aircraft uh, permit from the UK Civil Aviation Authority. So you might want to go and hunt one of those down uh, depending on where you're from uh, before you arrive. Another document you'll need to show is your public liability insurance. Uh, this is also a complicated document to track down. So I have contacted a number of insurers in Tunisia to ask if they will offer public liability insurance for flying a drone in Tunisia and uh, none of them have got back to me. Uh, but, so I'm assuming the answer is no. So nowhere on any of their websites does it say that they offer this kind of insurance. So you're probably gonna have to hunt this insurance down before you come into Tunisia and start flying your drone. So in the UK, this kind of insurance is actually pretty easy to, to get hold of. And I'm sure in the rest of Europe, it's pretty straightforward as well. So um, one thing you can do is you can join the British Model Flying Association. Uh, and as part of your membership fee, you actually get uh, public liability insurance up to 25 million pounds worth of cover uh, for certain types of flying. And there is my, there's my certificate. Uh, and as part of the application, I've actually circled the geographical limits that explains to them uh, that it is a worldwide policy, so it does actually cover me for liability in Tunisia. Again, you need to speak to the insurer carefully about this because obviously insurance needs to be specific to the activity you're taking part in uh, and commercial insurance for commercial activities will be different to insurance for personal activities. So it depends why you're flying your drone, you're gonna need to get a different kind of insurance. So we now have all the documentation we need to put the application in. So take yourself down to the Ministry of Infrastructure uh, and in particular, you are going to head to Building D, if you have a look on the map here, which I think deals with maritime and aerial stuff. Uh, and specifically, you are going to walk yourself upstairs to room 302. Uh, ignore the sign on the door that says it's something to do with airport construction. Uh, anyway, th that is the person that's going to deal with your application. So go in there and drop off all your documentation. Um, and as one added bonus that I forgot to add, um, they are not only going to require all your documentation uh, in a set of four, they are also going to require it on a CD. Um, yeah, so they won't accept it on USB, uh, they won't accept it emailed, you actually have to burn it onto a CD. So somehow you're going to have to find yourself a CD writer in the year 2021 uh, and put all this documentation onto CD for them before you drop it off. In conclusion, as you can see, this is a very bureaucratic and difficult process. Uh, it's not really helped by the fact the legislation is very old and not entirely clear on who's in charge of it all. Um, so you see a lot of conflicting information out there and a few of the people you speak to might not actually be clear on who's in charge of giving what. But if you follow all the procedures in this video, you should be able to import a drone into Tunisia in the year 2021. And hopefully things change in the future and become a bit easier um, and they start issuing permits uh, a little bit more readily. Because from all the research that I've done at all the ministries and speaking to people who work with drones, it sounds to me as though uh, it, it is borderline impossible to bring in a drone for personal use. Um, it seems to be the only people getting issued any kind of permission uh, are those who have some sort of commercial uh, argument for needing to use a drone. Now, if you don't want to go through the headache of sorting out all this paperwork and running around these ministries and trying to discuss this all with customers and everyone, uh, then there is an alternative. You can pay a licensed Tunisian drone operator to take the footage that you need for you. And there are a number of really good operators out there who've produced some stunning footage. Uh, you can see a lot of it on YouTube right now. So I will put some recommended operators in the description below if you'd like to get in contact with them. Uh, I've written to a few of them. They've all got back to me. Uh, a lot of them speak English. And that's a much simpler way of getting your drone footage rather than trying to bring in your own drone. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have, please stick a comment underneath uh, or like or subscribe or share this somewhere. Uh, also, I'm going to be running a Reddit AMA, so an Ask Me Anything, this Friday, the 29th of January. And I'll put some more information about that in the description for the video below. But if you'd like to ask me a question about my work here in Tunisia, please come along to the AMA and ask me there. And also, please look out for my Brat Travel Guide to Tunisia, which I hope should be coming out soon.